Hello, everyone. Welcome to our 41st Digital Readers Club meeting. And today we will be covering the Acts of John. I'm super excited to read this text with everyone. It covers some amazing details about the Apostle John's life and his ministry and uh, his exile to the Isle of Patmos and amazing things that occurred before that. Uh, I'm really excited to share this story with everyone as I myself wasn't even aware that it existed until we really started this study of the Great Commission One. So I'm thankful for everyone to join us today and prayerfully we'll have an awesome study. We always begin with fellowship and spend our first 10 minutes just catching up with everyone and seeing how everyone, uh, everybody's week has went. And then we will move into a time of reading and then we'll do a uh, sharing of insights, and then we'll do a Q&A at the end. So hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. How's everybody's week? Excellent and blessed. Yes. Hi, Kylie. See that Kylie just joined us. Exciting. Yay. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, Kylie. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> oh, sorry. Good evening. <laughs> for, you. Well, for you, good morning, though. <laughs> good New Zealand morning. Right. It is. It's winter oh, here, the and the the frost is all glittering in the sun. So it's a lovely morning. That's oh. crazy. That's so crazy. It's frosty, <laughs> and we're all sweating over here. Right. <laughs> we're in the height of summer. Yay! Mm. Lucky you. Mm, yeah, I love it. Zen can cook out in the sun for a long time. Uh, I he, love it. He soaks it's in good it for you. Yes. Put some coconut oil on and you'll get those vitamin D's and it helps mm -hmm. take away the bad rays. <clears throat> really? I didn't know that. Does it help? It Does it like soak in the vitamin D further or something? Yes. It's very, very good for you. When I was a little girl living in Australia, my father used to cake it on me and I'd go real, real chocolatey brown. And wow. uh, it's good for you. It's the best sunscreen you can have. As long as you don't stay out in it for hours, of course. Um, that's very all you true. need. Coconut oil. Yeah. God's wow. creation. Somebody yeah, sunscreen is actually bad for you. Oh, yeah. 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 All the chemicals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I recently heard that if you go into the sun and then you come back in and you take a shower, that's like washing off the vitamin D. There's like no point in going outside then. Is yeah. that, do you think that's true? Is there any right. logic in that? I don't know. Ah, so yeah. interesting. I'd never heard I of that. I would think we absorb it, you know. Right, like yeah. it goes into us. Yeah, but, it's very important. Yeah. yeah, it takes a minute for our skins to be able to absorb, though. So the sun leaves its residue on top of our skin, and then we uh, do our whatever cellular processes <laughs> are to get that stuff inside of us. Mm. Oh, well, I suppose baking out is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> As long as you don't burn. That's against everything they say over here, but uh, I don't tend to listen too much to what people say. I just go on what I think. <laughs> That's good. Right on. Well, I want to let everybody know in the Discord chat and on the YouTube live stream that there is a link to the reading for tonight in the description box, and I'll be posting it here in the Discord chat in one second. And we will be reading the Acts of John. And we encourage everyone who is in the YouTube live stream to look in that description box and look at the Discord link and try to get in touch with us on here and 
you can actually participate in the reading. And we always have a time after the study where we do prayer requests together and we pray for one another. And that is the most intimate setting. And this really is like a small group. It's like a Bible study that you would have at a local church, except we obviously aren't all local to one another. But that is an amazing blessing to be able to gather with uh, Sister Kylie from New Zealand. And we have some friends joining us in the YouTube chat from Florida and Canada and Tucson. So we have people from all over, and it's a great blessing to be able to utilize uh, this platform to be able to communicate and to share the testimony and to share fellowship with one another. I'm really looking forward to continuing through the Great Commission 1. And I just want to let everyone know that we only have a couple weeks left of the Great Commission 1 before we move into the Great Commission 2. Next weekend, Joy and I will be traveling to Florida to go to a wedding. So the study will not be live streamed. It will be recorded. Uh, so for everyone who's in the live stream, please get into the Discord and you'll be able to join Zen and everyone in the Discord channel to do the study. And it will be uploaded at a later date. So, yeah. yep, sorry about that interruption in the fellowship. Just a couple of announcements that I wanted to make sure everyone heard. We have quite a few people here. I'm I know, so excited. I know, this is such an exciting group of people. Hello, everyone. On our Discord channel. Oh, I have an announcement or a favor. We're actually doing Gary Wayne's AMA this coming Monday. And awesome. Jess is going to be hosting that. But I think we only have like four questions as of now. So if you have any questions for Gary Wayne, if you could please email us at sacredwordpublishingllc at gmail.com and subject line questions for Gary, that would be fantastic and much appreciated. I'm sure Gary has a lot too that he could probably bring to the show because uh, he gets bombarded every day. Sure. Definitely. Yeah, and we just had our, what was it, 19th AMA with Zen last night. And that's on the Zen Garcia YouTube channel as well. That was a really good show. Yeah, it's always a blast. And it's always funny to just give you a pop quiz every other <laughs> time. Right, yeah. <laughs> I enjoy it, though. <laughs> mm hmm well, I'll just give you an A. That's my opinion. Uh, thank you. It keeps me off my toes. Definitely. There were some tough yeah. questions there last night. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. And we got through, I think, like 28 of them, which is... Yeah, like, that's, that's a lot. Wow. Yeah. Wild. I thought of something else that we did this week that's exciting. Well, we've been working on this for the last month, I guess. But we have a new friend, Martin Stein, that's been helping us and has joined our team at Sacred Book Publishing. And he's just so talented. He is a video editor. And he is creating a trailer for us uh, for the... Sacred Word Revealed conference that's coming up in March of 2020. And... This week, we um, found somebody on Fiverr to do the voiceover for the trailer, and I listened to it uh, with the voiceover, with the soundtrack, and the video today, and it's just, it gave, it gave me chills. I'm wow. so excited to get it all done and to be able to share it with everyone, because it all is, right. wow, so cool. Do you want to make mention of the conference here, Joy? Uh, sure. Especially for the those that don't know about on the live stream yeah of course so we will be having our very first conference hosted by sacred word publishing and it's called sacred word revealed and it's going to be in atlanta georgia march 27th through 29th and the theme is unveiling end time mysteries and we have speakers of course zen garcia gary wayne dr pigeon dr joy Pugh, Stephen and yana 
Benoon, Justin Garcia, and Jonathan Kleck. So we're really excited to have that group of uh, just wonderful, dog-loving people. And we're, yeah, we're just really excited. So we hope to fellowship with you in March of 2020. And you can learn more, and you can purchase tickets and book your rooms and everything at sacredwordrevealed.com. And with that, it is 710. Yep. Very cool. All right. Well, we will go ahead and begin with a short prayer, and then we'll get straight into the reading. Father Yahuwah, we humble ourselves before you, and we're just so grateful that you've preserved our lives and that you've sustained us until this moment that we could join together and fellowship to seek your testimony and the testimony of your apostles and the people that you chose from the world to carry forward your testimony. We're so thankful for all the works that you've done and all of the submission which the servants of yours have done throughout the ages. And we likewise humble ourselves before you, Father, and ask that you would use us as your vessels in this latter days to be able to reach many people and to effectively share the truth of who you are and what you've done. And we just ask that you would prepare us, Father, with your armor and just give us knowledge of how to weld the sword of the Spirit to be able to slice through all of the deceit and the deception and the blinding barriers that keep our loved ones from knowing you, Father. We just ask that you would Speak through us and use us and bless us as we walk throughout our lives, Father, to be truly vessels unto you. And we just praise you, Father. We thank you so much that you offered your only begotten on the cross. And we thank you so much for revealing yourself to us and our hearts, Father. We are just so grateful to be called and to have the opportunity to be chosen out of this dark world to live in your infinite peace and your eternity of goodness. We just long for your return, Father, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love you and that are called according to your purpose. And we just thank you, Father, that you've called us. And we answer the call and we praise you and we worship you. And we exalt you above all that we are, Father. You are the Most High. You are our Creator and our Savior. You are the Lord and King. And you are our God. And we praise you in the name of the Messiah, Yahusha. Amen. 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 Awesome. Let's make sure that everybody on Discord actually wants to read. So if you do not want to read, please let us know. Joy, I'm going to pass it because I'm pretty sick with a cold. Sure, no problem. And we'll definitely pray for you afterwards as well. Where can we find the, the reading? Uh, Justin, do you want to okay, add the link add to the... the... Link. Sorry about that. Oh, and I just got your message, uh, Vahid. Vahid is not reading. Kathy is not reading. Uh... I think everybody else is reading. So, Zen, would you like to get started? Yes. Oh, Jen, Jen is probably not reading because of her kids. So, okay. let's also skip Jen. All right. I'm going to read. Oh, yay! Okay. Oh, good. Cool. You, yeah. might hear the, you might hear the chair in the background, but we'll oh, try okay. to minimize it. No problem. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> awesome. That's flavor. Yeah. All right. The Acts of John about his exile and departure. When Agrippa, whom on account of his plotting against peace, they stoned and put to death was king of the Jews, Vespian Caesar, coming with a great army, invested Jerusalem, and some prisoners of war he took and slew. Others he destroyed by famine in the siege, and most he banished and at length scattered up and down. And having destroyed the temple and put the holy vessels on board a ship, he sent them to Rome and made for himself a temple of peace and adorned it with the spoils of war. And when Vespian was dead, his son Domitian, having 
got possession of the kingdom along with his other wrongful acts, set himself also to make a persecution against the righteous men. For having learned that the city was filled with Jews, remembering the orders given by his father about them, he purposed casting them all out of the city of the Romans. And some of the Jews took courage and gave Domitian a book in which was written as follows. Are we reading just a, a couple paragraphs? Because I don't know if the you know if this is no, broken. Into one yeah, one per paragraph person. per person. Okay, all right. O Domitian, Caesar, and King of all the world, as many of us, our Jews entreat you as suppliants. We beseech you of your power not to banish us from your divine and benign countenance, for we are obedient to you and the customs and laws and practices and policy doing wrong and nothing, but being of the same mind with the Romans. But there is a new and a strange nation, neither agreeing with other nations nor consenting to religious observations of the Jews, the Jews, uncircumcised, inhuman, lawless, subverting whole houses, proclaiming a man as God, all assembling together under a strange name, that of a Christian. These men reject God, paying no heed to the law given to him, given by him, and proclaim to be the Son of God, a man born of ourselves, Jesus by name, whose parents and brothers and all his family have been connected with the Hebrews, whom on account of his great blasphemy and his wicked foolishness we gave up to the cross. And they had another blasphemous lie to their first one, him that was nailed up and buried, they glorified as having risen from the dead. And more than this, they falsely assert that he has been taken up by clouds into the heavens. At all this, the king, being affected with rage, ordered his sentence, uh, senate to publish a decree that they should put to death all who confess themselves to be Christians, those then who were found in the time of his rage, and who reaped the fruit of patience and were crowned in the triumphant contest against the works of the devil received the repose of incorruption. And the fame of the teaching of John was spread abroad in Rome, and it came to the ears of Domitian that there was a certain Hebrew in Ephesus, John by name, who spread a report about the seat of empire of the Romans, saying that it would quickly be rooted out, and that the kingdom of the Romans would be given over to another. And Domitian, troubled by what was said, sent a centurion with soldiers to seize John and bring him. And having gone to Ephesus, they asked where John lived. And having come up to his gate, they found him standing before the door. And thinking that he was the, the porter, they inquired of him and where John lived. And he answered and said, I am he. And they, despising his common and low and poor appearance, were filled with threats and said, Tell us the truth. And when he declared again that he was the man they sought, the neighbors, Moreover, bearing witness to it, they said that he was to go with them at once to the king in Rome, and urging them to take provisions for the journey, he turned and took a few dates and straight away went forth. And the soldiers, having taken the public conveyances, traveled fast, having seated him in the midst of them. And when they came to the first change, it being the hour of breakfast, they en entreated him to be of good courage and to take bread and eat with them. And John said, I rejoice in soul indeed, but in the meantime, I do not wish to take any food. And they started and were carried along quickly. And when it was evening, they stopped at a certain inn. And as besides, it was the hour of supper. The centurion and the soldiers being most kindly disposed and treated John to make use of what was set before them. But he said that he was very tired and in want of sleep more than any food. And as he did this each day, all the sword soldiers were struck with amazement and were afraid lest John should die and involve them in danger. But the Holy Spirit showed him to them as more cheerful. And on the seventh day, it being the Lord's day, he said to them, now it is time for me also to partake of food. And having washed his hands and face, he prayed and brought out the linen cloth and took one of the dates and ate it in the sight of all. And when they had ridden a long time, the end of their journey, John thus fasting, 
And they brought him before the king and said, Worshipful king, we bring to you John, a god, not a man. For from the hour in which we apprehended him to the present, he has not tasted bread. At this, Domitian, being amazed, stretched out his mouth on account of the wonder, wishing to salute him with a kiss. But John bent down his head and kissed his breast. And Domitian said, what have you, Why have you done this? Did you not think me worthy to kiss you? And John said to him, It is right to adore the hand of God first of all, and in this way to kiss the mouth of the king. For it is written in the holy books, The heart of a king is in the hand of God. Proverbs 21.1 And the king said to him, Are you John? Who said that my kingdom would speedily be uprooted, and that another king, Jesus, was going to reign instead of me? And John answered and said to him, You also shall reign for many years, given you by God. And after you, very many others, and when the times of the things upon earth have been fulfilled, out of heaven shall come a king, eternal, true, judge of living and dead, to whom every nation and tribe shall confess through whom every earthly power and dominion shall be brought to nothing, and every mouth speaking great things shall be shut. This is the mighty Lord and King of everything that has breath and flesh, the Word and Son of the Living One, who is Jesus Christ. At this, Dimension said to him, What is the proof of these things? I am not persuaded by words only. Words are a sight of the unseen. What can you show in earth or heaven by the power of him who is designed or destined to reign, as you say? For he will do it if he is the Son of God. And immediately John asked for a deadly poison, and the king, having ordered poison to be given to him, they brought it on the instant. John, therefore, having taken it, put it into a large cup and filled it with water and mixed it and cried out with a loud voice and said, In your name, Jesus Christ, Son of God, I drink the cup which you will sweeten, and the poison in it do I mingle with your Holy Spirit and make it become a drought of life and salvation, for the healing of soul and body, for digestion and harmless simulation, for faith not to be repented of, for an undeniable testimony of death is the cup of thanksgiving. And when he drank the cup, the standing beside Dimension expected that he was going to fall to the ground in convulsions. And when John stood cheerfully or cheerful and talked with them safe, Dimension was enraged against those who had given the poison, as having speared John. But they swore by the fortune and health of the king and said that there could be not a stronger poison than this. And John, understanding what they were whispering to one another, said to the king, Do not take it ill, O king, but let a trial be made, and you shall learn the power of the poison. Make some condemned criminal be brought from the prison. And when he had come, John put the water into the cup and swirled it around, and gave it with all the dregs to the condemned criminal. And he, having taken it and drunk it, immediately fell down and died. And when all the wondered at the signs that had been done, and when Domitian had returned and gone to his palace, John said to him, O Domitian, king of the Romans, did you contrive this, that you being present and bearing witness, Am I today become a murderer? What is to be done about the dead body which is lying? And he ordered it to be taken down, taken and thrown away. But John, going up to the dead body, said, O God, maker of the heavens, Lord and masters of angels, of glories, of powers, in the name of Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, give to this man who has died for this occasion a renewal of life, and restore him his soul, that Domitian may learn what the word is much more powerful than poison, and is the ruler of life. And having taken him by the hand, he raised him up alive. 
And when all were glorifying God and wondering at the faith of John, the Mishian said to him, I have put forth a decree of the Senate that all such persons should be similarly dealt with without trial. But since I find from you that they are innocent and that their religion is rather beneficial, I banish you to the island that I may not seem myself to do any to do away with my own decrees he asked them that the condemned criminal should be let go and when he was let go john said depart give thanks to god who has this day delivered you from prison and from death is it okay i was wondering and while they were standing a certain home-born slave of Domitian's, of those in the bedchamber, was suddenly seized by the unclean demon and lay dead. And word was brought to the king, and the king was moved and entreated John to help her. And John said, It is not in man to do this, but since you know how to reign, but do not know from whom you have received it, learn who has the power over both you and your kingdom. And he prayed thus, O Lord, the God of every kingdom and master of every creature, give to this maiden the breath of life. And having prayed, he raised her up. And Domitian, astonished at all the wonders, sent him away to an island, appointing for him a set time. And straight away John sailed to Patmos, where he also where also he was deemed worthy to see the revelation of the end. And when Domitian was dead, Nerva succeeded to the kingdom, and recalled all who had been banished. And having kept the kingdom for a year, he made Trajan his successor in the kingdom. And he, when he was king over the Romans, John went to Ephesus and regulated all the teaching of the church, holding many conferences and reminding them of what the Lord had said to them and what duty he had assigned to each. And when he was old and changed, he ordered Polycarp to be bishop over the church. And what this, and what like end was, or his departure from men, who cannot give an account of. For on the following day, which was the Lord's day, and in the presence of the brethren, he began to say to them, Brethren and fellow servants and co-heirs, and co-partners of the kingdom of the Know the Lord what miracles he has shown you through me, what wonders, what cures, what signs, what gracious gifts, teachings, rulings, rest, services, glories, graces, gifts, faith, communion. How many things you have seen with your eyes that ear has not heard. Be strong, therefore, in him, remembering him. Knowing the mystery of the dispensation that has come to men, for the sake of which the Lord has He then, through me, exhorts you. Brethren, I wish to remain without grief, without insult, without treachery, without punishment. For he who knows insult from you, he knows also dishonor. He knows also treachery. He knows also punishment from those who disobey his commandments. Let not therefore our God be grieved. The good, the compassionate, the merciful, the holy, the pure, the undefiled, the only, the one, the immutable, the sincere, the guileless, the slow to anger. He that is higher and more exalted than every name that we speak or think of. Our God, Jesus Christ. Let him rejoice along with us because we conduct ourselves well. Let him be glad because we live in purity. Let him rest because we behave reverently. Let him be pleased because we live in fellowship. Let him smile because we are sober-minded. Let him be delighted because we love. These things, brethren, I communicate to you, pressing on to the work set before me, already perfected for me by the Lord. For what else have I to say to you? Keep the sureties of your God. Keep his presence. That, sh that shall not be taken away from you. For if then ye sin no more, he will forgive you what you have done in ignorance. 
But if after you have known him and he has had compassion upon you, you return to the light courses, even your former offenses will be laid to your charge. And you shall have no portion or compassion before his face. Hebrews 10.26 And when he had said this to them, he thus prayed, Jesus, who wreathed this crown by your twining, who has inserted these many flowers into the everlasting flower of your countenance, who has sown these words among them, be you yourself the protector and healer of your people. You alone are benign benignant and not haughty, alone merciful and kind, alone a savior and just, you who always sees what belongs to all and are in all and everywhere present, God, Lord Jesus Christ, who with your gifts and your compassion covers those that hope in you, who know intimately those that everywhere speak against us and blaspheme your holy name, do thou alone, O Lord, Help your servants with your watchful care. So be it, Lord. And having asked bread, he gave thanks thus, saying, What praise, or what sort of offering, or what thanksgiving shall we, breaking the bread, invoke but you only? We glorify the name by which you have been called by the Father. We glorify the name by which you have been called through the Son. We glorify the resurrection which has been manifested to us through you. Of you we glorify the seed, the word, the grace, the true pearl, the treasure, the plow, the net, Matthew 13, the majesty, the diadem, him called son of man for our sakes, the truth, the rest, the knowledge, the freedom, the place of refuge in you. For you alone are Lord the root of immortality and the fountain of incorruption and the seat of the ages. You who has been called all these for our sakes, that now we calling upon you through these may recognize your illimitable majesty presented to us by your presence that can be seen only by the pure, seen in your only Son. And heaven, and heaven. Oh, sorry. And having broken the bread, <clears throat> he gave it to us, praying for each of the brethren that he might be worthy of the Eucharist of the Lord. He also, therefore, having likewise tasted it, said to me also, let there be a portion with you and peace, O beloved. And having thus spoken and confirmed the brethren, he said to Eucharist, also named Varus, behold, I appoint you a minister of the church of Christ, and I entrust to you the flock of Christ. Be mindful, therefore, of the commandments of the Lord, and if you should fall into trials or dangers, be not afraid, for you shall fall under many troubles, and you shall be shown to be an eminent witness of the Lord. Thus then, Varus, attend to the flock as a servant of God until the time appointed for your testimony. And when John had spoken this, and more than this, Having entrusted to him the flock of Christ, he says to them, Take some brethren with baskets and vessels and follow me. And Eucharist, without considering, did what he was bid. And the blessed John, having gone forth from the house, went outside of the gates, having told the multitude to stand off from him. And having come to the tomb of one of our brethren, he told them to dig, and they dug. And he says, let the trench be deeper. And as they dug, he conversed with those who had come out of the house with him, building them up and finishing them thoroughly into the majesty of the Lord. And when the young man and when the young men had finished the trench as he had wished, while he knew nothing, he takes off the clothes he had on and throws them as if they were some bedding into the depth of the trench, and standing in only his drawers, he stretched forth his hands and prayed. O God, who has chosen us for the mission of the Gentiles, who has sent us out into the world, who has declared yourself through the apostles, who has never rested, but always saved us from the foundation of the world, 
who has made yourself known through all nature, who has made all wild and savage nature quiet and peaceably, who has given yourself to it when thirsting after knowledge, who has put to death its adversary when it took refuge in you, who has given it your hand and raised it from the things done in Hades, who has shown its own enemy, who has in purity turned its thoughts upon you, O Jesus Christ, O Christ Jesus, Lord of things in heaven and the law of the things on earth, the course of the things aerial and the guardian of things ethereal, the fear of those under the earth and the grace of your own people receive all receive also the soul of your john which has been certainly deemed worthy by you you who has preserved me also till the present hour pure to yourself and free from intercourse with women who when i wished in my youth to marry appear to me and say i am in need of you john who strengthened for me beforehand my bodily we weakness who when a third time i wished to marry said at the third hour in the sea john if you were not mine i would let you marry who has opened up the sight of my hand my mind and has favored my bodily eyes who when i was looking about me called even the gazing upon a woman hateful who delivered me from the temporary show and preserved me from that which endures forever who separated me from the filthy madness of the flesh who stopped up the secret disease of the soul and cut out its open actions who afflicted and banished him who rebelled in me who established my love to you spotless and impaired who gave me unabdoubted faith in you, who has drawn out of me pure thoughts towards you, who has given me the due reward of my works, who has set it in my soul to have no other possession than you alone, for what is precious, more precious than you o now, O Lord, when I have accomplished your stewardship with which I was entrusted, make me worthy of your repose having wrought that which is perfect in you which is an effable salvation and as i go to you let the fire withdraw let darkness be overcome let the furnace be slackened let gehenna be extinguished let the angels follow let the demons be afraid let the princes be broken in pieces let the powers of darkness fall let the places on the right hand stand firm. Let those on the left abide not. Let the devil be muzzled. Let Satan be laughed to scorn. Let his madness be tamed. Let his wrath be broken. Let his children be trodden underfoot. And let all his root be uprooted. And grant to me to be accomplished the journey to you, not insulted, not despised spitefully treated and to receive what you have promised to those that live in purity and that have loved a holy life and gazing towards heaven he glorified god and having sealed himself altogether he stood and said to us peace and grace be with you brethren and set the brethren away and when they went on the morrow they did not find him but his sandals and a fountain welling up. And after that they remembered what they what had been said to Peter by the Lord about him. For what does it concern you if I should wish him to remain until I come? John twenty one twenty two. And they glorified God for the miracle that had happened. And having thus believed, they retired praising and blessing the benignant God. Because to him is due all glory now and forever, and to ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, everybody, for reading and for participating in the study. This was quite an amazing few uh, verses that we read through today about John the Apostle and about his exile and about some stories that we just don't really have in our current Bibles. It's amazing to see the, the detail that was recorded about John's life and the amazing miracles which the Holy Spirit worked through him. And just to be able to read some of the awesome prayers and see the obvious love that he had for the Most High. So that was an amazing reading, and I'm glad that we got to read it together. I was actually so excited to be able to read with everyone, and last week when we had to postpone the study, I was kind of sad, but I think it was meant to be so that we would have more people here with us today yes. to read. And it sure is a touching story. So after we do our reading, we always move into a time of sharing insights. And afterwards, we'll follow that up with some questions and answers. And lastly, at 8 o'clock, we'll end the study and we'll begin our uh, intimate prayer time. We'll stop the live stream and we will move into a prayer request and prayer time. So yeah, if anyone would like to share some insights or emphasize any of the certain verses that we read tonight, this is the time to do so. I'll go ahead and open up the mic. I can uh, bring up something that I found uh, of great interest. Uh, it has to do with what what people and a lot of people believe to be, you know, that once saved, always saved, and that as long as you accept Christ as Savior and Messiah, that that's all you have to do, and you're good to go for the rest of your life, and that, you know, there's no responsibility after that. And, we see even in the story of, of the adulteress that was brought and how uh, they asked Christ to participate in her stoning. And he said to them, you know, let who is without sin cast the first stone. And then they all scattered, recognizing that they were sinners. But he told her to go forth and to sin no more. And so there's a passage here. Um, it because I, I I get asked this question a lot as well, and John said, "And if then ye sin no more, he will forgive you what you have done in ignorance, but if after you have known him and he has compassion upon you, you return to like the like course, even your former offenses will be laid to your charge." And you shall have no portion or compassion before his face. And so I think that sums it up uh, precisely that, you know, when we become born again new in Christ and that we accept him into our heart, that we have a responsibility to be holy and to be as much as we can, even though we are sinners and we are in a fallen state of being, but to hold him in our hearts and to keep a sanctuary for him to dwell with us and with, within us, that we should try to be as he example to us and to be holy in every aspect as we can. Um, of course, you know, we are not perfect and we fall short, but I think that especially after declaring ourselves Christian um, and being born again in Christ and admitting such that we have a responsibility to share that example, not just by word, but by life, and that our lives become our testimony in our prayer. And that um, really, like the Pharisees, they 
uh, were out, outwardly holy, but inwardly they were corrupt and rotten to the core. And so I think those that fall short in this aspect and that think that, you know, they can go and sin and have no responsibility to uh, uphold a standard that they are the ones that at the end of days that Christ says, away from me, you workers of iniquity, I know you not. Because, again, they said, you know, we did all these things. We fed the the hungry and clothed the naked and did this in your name and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And, and yet um, they were not truthful in their heart and seeking and holding relationship with him. And because of that, I think he pushes them away, just in my opinion. I agree with you, yes. Ben. Uh, I also find that while you're on there anyways, um, that when, you know, when I personally am praying daily, I always, yeah, to be more like him because we are in this sinful world and it's, you know, it's a, it's a tough cross to bear, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is another scripture too, Zen, says that we are to persevere to the end. Yes. That we will be found worthy. So it's not about, um, like you're saying, I'm pleased you brought it up. I was going to as well. You know, this once saved, always saved is such a lie, a lie from the devil. Um, and it also stops people seeking, seeking God's ways. Right. Um, and to come out from the functions of the world and the mindset of the world and to become what God has ordained and what he has put in place and, you know, his ways, um, his structures, you know, his calendar for one, you know, with the feasts come out from paganism. Yeah. Um, you know, it, um, yeah, so there's a lot in that. I think it's everything, actually, persevering to the end. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it takes great effort. Um, yeah, and, and a conscious effort. Yes, I agree. Daily. Definitely. I was also going, yeah, I was also going to bring up a wee point about fasting. I brought it up last time, and I think the Lord must be talking to me about it. I just like my food too much, because I do struggle with fasting. But, you know, it was through John's fasting for those six days that really gave him entry into the king's heart because and the people that were with him. Um, they realized that he was different. He did things differently. And by the time that he got to the king's palace, see him as a mere man, but as a God sort of type figure because he had gone six days without eating, but on the Lord's Sabbath, he chose to eat. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we read the other week that for fasting, it's important to fast for times where you're in bondage oppression, or in a situation that you sort of can't get out of, where um, hopelessness is there. And, and this could have been the, the time that John thought, well, Lord, it's about you now, not me. I need to fast because so that your will you know, can be done and it does make you sharper and you know, be more closer to God, if you know what I mean. It sharpens your yes. spirit. And it's a witness to those around you as well. Amen. Yeah, I like how you said the the one saved, always saved doctrine. It really pulls people away from seeking the ways of the Most High. And it's really true when we come to like a very basic over overview understanding of the gospel and we we never in this culture we don't seek to be full of the Holy Spirit. And it's really sad because the true freedom and the true joy and the true love and true purpose comes when the Holy Spirit fills our hearts. And it's something that, you know, we really have to fight for in this world and especially in this last times where the love of so many has grown cold. Yes. And we have such a corrupted perception of what love is. I mean, our, our calling 
to be pure is something that is a true war. And it's something that in our hearts, I mean, we're constantly, we're, we're waging a battle against that sinful flesh. But I think it's awesome in here. In one of John's prayers, he was talking about how the Spirit, you know, the Messiah comes into our hearts and changes that evil flesh and all of the darkness is taken away when we fix our eyes upon him. Yes. I think that was really amazing. So after our sharing of insights, we always move into a time of questions and answers, and I want to do that. But before we do so, I want to just give a shout out to Inglewood Ron, he he said, Zen, I love your teaching, the way you do it, everything, every night at work, I listen to you, your YouTube studies, and my love for the Lord has grown so much, and my eyes are open to this world. And he also uh, donated $10. Thank you so much, brother, for, for your support. And thank you also, I rock well. He also made a $10 donation and said, Shalom. We're just so grateful for this family that we've developed on this platform of YouTube to be able to live stream and to join together and fellowship like this. We're so blessed and we're so thankful for people like you all that are uh, truly supporting us. And we pray that anyone who's out there who needs help, will remember to reach out because we are just a ministry and we want to forward all these blessings that we receive. And we thank you so much. Joy and I were actually planning on going and we're trying to come up with some money to send to the orphanage over in yeah. India. And that will definitely help. We'll make sure that your seed gets forwarded and we praise you all for you all. Yeah. So yeah, let's continue on. And if anyone wants to share insights, please continue to do so. But we did have one question uh, from Vahid in the DRC Discord chat. She said, so was John taken up or did he die? And in my opinion, it seemed to be insinuated that he was taken up. It seems so. Yeah, very, very interesting. Much like Ezekiel, you know, when they were right. following after him. And in the same way, they only found uh, his clothes. Right. Yeah, they found his sandals. Right. Very interesting. Yeah, it's definitely something that uh, some people have taught about. Some prophecy teachers have have actually called John one of the two witnesses that would come in Revelation. That's an interesting concept because in the in the actual canon that we have today, it even says that John would have to come and prophesy again. That's an interesting concept to think that maybe he will come back in the end times when he has a, another mission to fulfill. Not sure. Well, Christ does, you know, it says that he'll come 10,000 of his saints. So um, I personally believe that Enoch and Elijah, and there's many places that um, specify them being the two witnesses of Revelation 11, but certainly, uh, you know, the apostles and patriarchs and prophets will return with Christ at the end of the days. I'll bring one other real quick point uh, forward. And it's interesting that when it speaks about the devil at the end of one of the prayers here, it says, um, let the demons be afraid, let the princes be broken in pieces, let the powers of darkness fall, let the places on the right hand stand firm, let those on the left abide not, let the devil be muzzled, let Satan be laughed to scorn, let his madness be tamed, let his wrath be broken, and let his children be trodden underfoot and let all his root be uprooted. And this, again, in my opinion, is connected to uh, the Genesis 3, the 
enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent, and also to Isaiah chapter 14, where it speaks of uh, Satan as the abominable branch, and that his children are half of the family tree of humanity. And it says of them there uh, that the seed of evildoers will never inherit the kingdom. And that God also speaks about uh, prepare slaughter for his children that they inherit, not the cities. And that Christ also speaks about this in Matthew 13, where he uh, talks about the tares being the children of the enemy, the enemy um, being, you know, uh, Satan. And it says also that the enemy is the devil and that he is the father of the tares. And so I thought that was an interesting passage and connected, um, you know, again, his root and his root, Cain, being the progenitor of his bloodline, that we see the war between the children of Adam and the children of Cain, the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent, cited all throughout Scripture. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. We had another question from the YouTube chat from Christy. It says, how do we keep our hearts from becoming hardened during these times? And that is something that uh, we experienced just a couple days ago. We were talking with one of our brothers in South Africa. Yeah. And honestly, you're, you're not alone in this feeling of, pure desire for the Messiah to just return already. We've had enough with this life, and we've had enough with these crazy, deceived people that are running around rampantly. But we have to always remember our calling and the grace by which we were saved. It's the same grace that those people as well can receive. So that is our mission, and I mean, prayerfully, we are armored up, and you know, we are hardened to a degree, but we have a goal and a desire to help other people, as uh, finally Free said in the Discord channel, it's helping other people. Mm -hmm. and I truly believe that. So, is anybody else? Uh, Scott says, how reliable is the text, and how does it hold up to other pseudepigrapha life texts? How old is it, and what language? Well, Scott, you have quite a few questions there. <laughs> uh, it's, let me uh, look it up real quick. That, the Acts of John came from circa 150 to 200 A.D., It's a it's a pretty similar time to where a lot of what we have in the New Testament, the oldest manuscripts, are uh, contained. I'm sure it Zen was, knows more about it. It too. was preserved in the anti Nicene uh, by the Church Fathers when they had the dialogue of and discussing those books which should be included in the canon, and so I believe it to be. A, a very reliable text, but you know the canonical, um, the process of the canon, in my opinion, was more so to hide and to keep truth from the masses than it was about giving it to us. And it's always been that way, because the the seed of the serpent has been warring against us, and that's why you have um, you know so few being authorized and approved. And most has been hidden. And so I think that people should read and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in discernment. Um, because having read the text, uh, it, in my opinion, falls right in line with everything that we know of and have learned about the gospel. I don't see any contradictions. And I feel pretty confident uh, with what it says. I'm not saying, of course, that it's gospel and is inspired 
um, you know, by the divine mind of the Most High God and preserved for us in that manner. But certainly it adds to detail and gives us insight into the end of John's life and also speaks about the revelation, you know, how he was given the revelation, his banishment to Patmos, and how he was able to be a witness even to Domitian uh, about the nature and why Christians uh, believe and are willing to give their lives for their belief and for their faith. And so I see it as a, a beautiful story and a one that is deeply moving and can, um, you know, assist others to understand and um, learn more about what is found in the canonical materials, in my opinion. Yeah, I think that it's important for us to be able to study these texts. And, of course, all of our faith, we're, we're based on the canon that's been preserved. And we cross-reference everything to that. And we give all glory to God for his preservation of the testimony of his works on the earth. Uh, in the Second Council of Nicaea in 787, CE, uh, some of the Acts of John were rejected as heretical. And that is because a lot of the circulation of the Acts of the Apostles, uh, they were taken and they were added on to as they went into various different languages and spread across the, the world and the church world. People would add to or take away and uh, the modern versions that we have, they are from a multitude of different uh, manuscripts that were found. So they cross-reference those together. So it is important for us to read with that in mind, to be able to see each part and relate each part and everything that we're told back to what we know is truth. So yeah. with that said, it is 8.02. and We'll go ahead and say a quick prayer, and then we'll move into our uh, prayer time. We encourage everyone that's joined us on the YouTube live stream to join us on the Discord channel so that we can pray together. And we're so thankful that you joined us. Uh, would anyone like to close us in prayer? I know someone would love to close us. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll take the great opportunity to pray for all these lovely people one more time. Father Yahua, we humble ourselves before you again, and we're so thankful that we have this chance to read the Acts of John and to see his love for you and his ministry and the trials that he went through and the faith that he expressed in going through all of these amazing uh, paths that you led him through. And uh, we're thankful for the opportunity to join together to just seek after you and seek to be people that are really filled with your love and servants who are really receptive of the calling and the instruction that you've given to us. We just thank you so much for each person that's joined us. We're just so bonded by the love that you've instilled in each one of us. I'm so, so, so thankful. I'm just so grateful for each person that's here, Father. We're just so grateful to have this chance to come together and to lift your name up, Father, for you are the Most High. And we praise you in the name of the Messiah, Yahusha. We lift you up, Father, with our voices and in our hearts. We just exalt you and ask that you would take away every desire that we have that's contrary to what you desire. Please fill us, Father, and give us clear mind to receive your instruction and your love and open our hearts to be receptive of that calling, Father. And please give us the strength to obey and the strength of mind to be able to rid ourselves of the hardened souls that this world has tried to cake onto us as we've 
treaded through the mud of, of this life and it's overcome us and it's weighing us down, we just pray that you would break off that dirty shell and let your light shine through us, Father. We thank you so much for your love and for what you've done, for you've purchased us with your blood, and we praise you. Thank you so much, Father, for the promise that we have through you. We rejoice in you, Father, for you are amazing, and you've called us your friends and your children and your servants and your bride. And we're so thankful, Father, that we mean so much to you that you've come to this earth and that you've died on the cross for us to give us a chance to call us out of the life that we were living and that you defeated death and that now we have the promise through you, Father, through faith in you that we can defeat death also. By your grace, Father, we ask that you would Bless us and keep us, Father, until the time that you come. And when you return, Father, please preserve us so that we can stand before you blameless in reception of that white linen that you have prepared for your saints. We just love you and thank you so much for your love and for what you've promised to us. And we hold on to your promise. And we thank you again in the name of the Messiah, Yahusha. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Love you, Amen. everyone. Thank you for joining us. And we will see you uh, next week. Also, Parkour is my girlfriend. I saw your prayer request, and we will definitely add it to the list and be praying for you. All right. Shalom. Be blessed all. Good night. Thank mm -hmm. you.